Hello, and Check welcome them. to episode four of the podcast that's not really a podcast. I'm Joe from JKEV, and as always, I'm joined by... Regular EV dad, John. Hope you're well. So, Joe, I'll tell you about what I'm up to in a minute, but because uh, I'm doing this live from a, uh, a cafe in the middle of nowhere. But uh, what have you been up to recently? Uh, lately, just been... I went to the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, went and drove some plug-in BMWs. And right now we're in the middle of planning our next big road trip, a little over 4,000 miles to Montana. So as always, uh, keeping life busy. <laughs> How about you? It has been one hell of a week. And if, if you're following me on Twitter, you may have seen some of this. So I found myself in Portland helping out Mrs. Regular EV. And I woke up just doing a conference call with my team in Europe and see a tweet out the corner of my eye that Kyle from Outer Spec Motoring was literally a quarter of a mile away, along with Sandy Monroe and the entire team from uh, Transport Evolved. So um, I was hanging out with them on Tuesday, which was kind of cool. There'll be a video on that in the future. But today, uh, helping out the wife uh, as part of my road trip, um, and I'm doing this live from the Bankers Cup in St. Paul, uh, Oregon. I gotta say, it's a damn good cup of coffee. I heard that uh, since this video is related to charging, getting the most out of your EV, I heard recently you had some electrical issues. <laughs> All right, so this is not EV related. This is, uh, and again, sorry viewers for the bad audio, but this is the only chance we get to record this. Um, yeah, low voltage is dangerous. This was not to do with my car. This was the uh, fairgrounds that we're at. Have a, uh, they're running 300 kilowatt um, diesel generators and there are 60 RVs on site and the uh, voltage dropped below 100. And um, low voltage kills air conditioners, TVs and anything else. So yeah, last time you and I spoke, I was driving around the countryside trying to find electrical wholesalers to uh, swap out some parts. Don't buy an RV if you like money. It's it, just don't do it, don't, don't, don't do it. So this would probably be a good time to point out that as you can see behind me, we're going through renovations. So we don't even have doors. And as John just explained, he didn't have electricity. So if you would like us to have doors and his family to have electricity, it'd be a great idea to like and subscribe this video. Uh, and make sure to subscribe to both channels as the links will be down below. Be sure to comment below with what's the lowest state of charge you've ever arrived with or have you ever ran out? We'd love to know. So uh, last time we just uh, chatted, we were discussing Electrify America, EVGo, ChargePoint, a bunch of the networks that are available to use for DC fast charging, as well as we discussed level two charging, level one charging briefly. But today we wanna to go a little bit deeper into how to get the most out of your DC fast charging. Um, so, for, uh, so how have you been able to utilize the charging curve of the ID4 to get your trips, get to your destination faster than a better route planner would suggest possible? Yeah, and so let me, let's, let's make some context to this. Look, most of, um, there's some statistics from this. Most people drive on average less than 50 miles per day. And, and that's gonna be the use case for, for any vehicle. It doesn't matter whether it's running on biodiesel, gas, or even if you have to push it, well, hopefully you'd have a shorter commute. It's when you're going beyond, um, I'm gonna just arbitrarily say 350 miles, so that you are forced to make a charging stop. That's what we wanna focus on today. How do you get the best uh, speed, time, distance, performance when you're going more than 350 miles, when you have to make a, a DC charge. And so let me ask you, this is a question, because I know, I know the direction we're going to go on this one, Joe. What's the lowest you've got your battery down to when you've been road tripping? On our uh, recent cross-country trip, climbing out of the, the mountains, out of Death Valley, we arrived with 4%. So uh, we are definitely, had a, I experienced a range anxiety. <laughs> But we made it, and uh, even though the gaso meter on the Volkswagen thought it wasn't possible, we made it. How about you? 
Yeah, my badge of honor would be just under 2%, um, which I think was going through Nebraska. And in fact, I spoke to Kyle about this the other day. I'll put a link to the video uh, that we're going to put up. Uh, he's not apologizing for encouraging this be behind of behavior, but you need to do it responsibly. And that means knowing what you're doing. And that's why we're doing this video. So whilst I have brought it down to 2%, I knew I was going to come in at 2%. That's the, the crucial element. It, and, and that gives you, if you think about it, to, you know, worst case scenario, two and a half miles per kilo hour of juice that gives you five miles to play with. Uh, and I'm comfortable with that because I know it's flat ground, the wind, da, 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 da. Um, but here's the benefit, and this is why we do these things. So if between zero and 40% is what we call the fat charge element, um, this is where you can dump 129, nearly 130 kilowatts per hour of juice straight into uh, the battery. The, uh, this is the fastest charge you'll get. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> it means that you can put 100 miles of charge into the battery in 12 minutes. That's the, that, that's the difference it makes. But uh, let me, uh, I'll throw up, a, uh, I'll put it in the edit, and I'll actually show you what charging curve that we, we talk about this. The magic um, of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll do it, we'll fix it in post. But the, uh, what that means in human terms is that essentially you can drive for an hour and a half and then charge for 15 minutes and then drive for an hour and a half and then charge for 15 minutes. Now, you know, that might not sound normal, but you've done the cross country thing as well. Talk about how that feels like in real life. Yeah, so uh, there are two ways you can go about it. You can arrive at a destination with 10% and charge all the way up to 80 or 90% and stretch it to skip the next charger or two to go, go to get it back down to 10%. Uh, that might be like a three hour stretch of driving. And then, but then you'll be stuck charging for about 45 minutes or so. Uh, I have found that I much rather drive an hour and a half and charge for 15 minutes and just keep repeating that process because quite frankly, after an hour and a half, I'm ready to get out of the car for a couple of minutes anyway. How about you? Well, I think anybody that's watched my videos knows that for me, driving is the, ba is the battle between the battery and the bladder. Um, whilst the uh, whilst the car can comfortably go 80 miles an hour with the air conditioning set to stun for 235 miles, I know I've done it. Um, I I cannot. Uh, either me or the dog's going to have to pee on a tree at some point, or possibly a Walmart uh, restroom if that's available. Um, or both. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but when I look at the um, when I look at the cross country road trip. Um, and actually not just, by the way, this isn't just um, uh, my car, not, not just our car, the ID4, but also when I road trip the Tesla Model 3 long range to through Wyoming, I would average tw two hours of driving, of real driving, and then 20 minutes of the supercharger um, because, you know, I need to pee and I need coffee and I need, I need lunch. And that's one of the great things about EV charging is that you can do it while you're peeing. You don't, you know, whereas if you, uh, they get really angry if you leave the gas flowing over, you know, at, 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 uh, at a flying J. It's uh, just one of those things. Um, and I don't like to leave the, uh, the fuel tank exposed for 20 minutes while I uh, take care of nature's requirements. No, it's, um, it doesn't make sense immediately but once you've done it a couple of times, you get into a nice, I'm going to say cadence between, you know, fueling, stretching, driving. And it, it doesn't actually add that much to the, to the journey. Um, just while I, you, you talk more on that while I just try and, while I just pull some data from my recent trip to Medford. Yeah, so one of the nice things is uh, historically when we are taking our hybrid across the country, we wanted to get a fast food drive through, eat as fast as possible, sometimes eat while driving, just to keep pushing down the road. Because we're charging while we're eating uh, on our EV road trips, if you take five or 10 minutes longer to eat and you sit down and re relax, it actually, you're still getting charged while you're eating. So it's actually not time wasted because you're just 
saving, you're charging more now, that means you're gonna charge less later and it all equals out at the end, short of a couple minutes difference in charging. Um, I know you wanted to just show a chart that you were able to download from your uh, EV Notify, I believe. Yeah, I'll show that afterwards. I was actually going to talk about this trip now, just so this is the one I'm on. This, this is very real. So I drove from San Jose to um, Medford uh, in Southern Oregon um, earlier in the week as on my way to Portland. And this will be the video I put out probably over the weekend. Um, now, I had to stop three times on on that trip. Um, now, the distance of the trip isn't important. All you need to know is that I pulled into Willows with 17% state of charge. I charged for 26 minutes, um, which took me to 80% state of charge. I pulled into Anderson with 33%. Now that's less than, it's about 60 miles later. I wouldn't normally stop at Anderson, except for the fact that I needed to stop there because I had to get over the mountain passes. I charged there for exactly 22 minutes again to have 72 percent state of charge um and then having gone through the mountain passes into um through into Wairika, i pulled in with 15 percent of state of charge i charged for exactly 24 minutes again pulled out with 70 percent and here's the important thing i pulled into my hotel with three percent i think it was state of charge and i went to bed and charged my battery same as the car just plugged it in and you know so in total i spent um you think about this i spent six and a half seven hours in total you see one o'clock to eleven o'clock so 10 hours of actual travel time and i spent one hour and four minutes charging that's not a bad ratio um Ignoring the cost, because, you know, charging is free when I went for America for the first three years, but even so, this wouldn't have cost me as much as it would in, in, in gasoline, and yes, we do have $4 gas in California, but even at $2.5 gas in Wyoming, that's still a real cost. It's, I arrived awake enough, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't hard charging to, you know, get into bed. It, uh, it's a very natural way of charging, uh, a very natural way of driving once you get used to it. And, and, as, and then more importantly, as long as you plan for it. I think that's the, that's the only compromise we have to pull off where we're going to pull off. We can't say, oh, we'll just go to the next exit. That's not a choice we always have because there might not be a DC fast charger at the next exit. I mean, I think an important thing to note is people constantly ask me, how long do you spend charging? How long does it take to charge? And the truth is, I'm always multitasking. I'm either eating or it's a restroom break or something's going on during those DC charges that whether, no matter what car I was taking, I, you probably would have been stopping for at least an hour that day just to get to your destination. So, I mean, here's a perfect example, Joe. Um, this was a charge I did on a Sunday morning a uh, week and a half ago. I, uh, you can see down here on the green display, I pulled, that's the, that 20, it means 20%. So I pulled in with around uh, 20%. Now I was uh, charging up to 40% because I was skipping to the next charging point. <clears throat> Ironically, I, I'd arranged to meet somebody at a charger so I could pick up a dog, again, making use of my time. Um, I only needed to go to 40, so I could coast in at 2%, and again, but this is what we call the charging curve, this blue line. So you'll notice it goes up really, really quickly, like in the matter of a, a minute or so here. And then it's running at 120 some kilowatts per hour. And so you've got this constant going in. Now, ironically, because I pulled, up, pulled out, you can see it just tapering slightly. Um, we always say at 38% which would be uh, around this mark, if it can be seen on my screen, it starts to reduce to just under 100. We can see here, because everything was nice and cool, it kept going all the way down, right up until the point where I actually disconnected uh, when I finished getting my charge. That's what we call a charging curve. Um, I'll put a link into a video from Tom uh, Mahoney. I, hopefully I got his Magogli. I always get his name wrong. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, he has a YouTube channel called um, State of Charge. 
And so we'll actually show you the, the full charging curve um, profile for the, the, the ID4 um, in there. But this is where we talk about getting the most out of the, um, out of the performance by just putting the charge you need in to get to the next charge, or maybe a little bit of a buffer. Um, but nothing more than nothing more than a couple of percent because so when I'm driving the RV and this has got an 80 gallon gas tank which by the way you don't ever want it to go empty because it's expensive but I am aware very aware that I am carrying gas to carry the gas it's like a rocket you know it's like a, a, a SpaceX rocket you have to carry your fuel with you well, the weight of our vehicle doesn't change when the ions come out, certainly nothing noticeable, but the time does, you don't get that back. So putting in the minimum amount of charge is good for you. Put a little bit of a margin in, get to the next stop. Don't, don't go to the bathroom and then charge, plug in, then go to the bathroom. This is where you'll get the best experience. And then, like I always say, just remember, you're only doing this when you're going more than 300 miles. The rest of the time, you're starting each day with a full tank of ions. That's right. Uh, many people have said, well, if it takes longer to get to the destination than a gas car. Why would you own an EV? Well, I would argue that the daily usage, which is 49 to 50 weeks of the year for me, it's more convenient having the EV knowing that every day you're leaving home with a full charge. You're never needing to schedule a gas station stop into your route uh, of your daily tasks. Absolutely. Is there, uh, I, think we've, I think we've covered this off. I think, I think it, it, it's worth pointing out, you know, we're doing this from life experience and so we'll include links to our road trips, which includes the charging data, i.e. the amount of charge we took and the, uh, the, the time we took at these various facilities. We're both geeks, so we both, uh, we both provide all the data on these things. Um, but other than that, I think this sets us up nice. I think we can say that next time, what we will talk about is the apps that make charging uh, easier. Uh, I think we should talk about PlugShare, EV Connect, and a few others. Um, I read an article today uh, on Axios where he said that he was driving a Ford Mustang up the East Coast and he couldn't find charges. Well, that's just bad reporting and it shows a level of intelligence. Like, well, there was a Tesla supercharger, but I couldn't find that. It's not a Tesla. It's like knowing the difference between diesel and gas. You just need to know where they are. It's not that hard. So we'll, uh, I think our next video will focus on, uh, on the apps and finding and, and, and making best use of that infrastructure, if that's all right with you. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. In that case, uh, I've been uh, John, your regular EV dad. And I'm Joe from JKEV. And if you have been, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, add your comments. We've got more videos to come, uh, lots more content. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care.